Today's program is going to be resistance and cardio. So go get your dumbbells, your exercise bands, whatever you need, but today is a treat. And this is full body. So every Saturday you're gonna work full body. So brace yourself, this is awesome. Hard, but awesome. And it's a combination show. We're gonna do weights and cardio. So what we do is we don't get a one minute break today. Now remember, it's only once a week, it's every Saturday. So you don't get a break today. During the one minute break, you're gonna do either a horse stance, which is where you get your feet about shoulder width apart as if you're riding a horse. And then the next round during the one minute break, you're gonna do a jockey stance, which is where your knees are closer together and you just squat down. And you hold it for as long as you can. If you can do the full minute, God bless you if you can't. <laughs> do 10 seconds and then rest for 10 seconds. Do five seconds, come up for five seconds. Do whatever you can. All right, Saturday, we're gonna start with push-ups. So round number one for beginners, Lori likes to just lay on her stomach and just press up. So this is a beginner move where you're just gonna press up. You're gonna work the, work the flexibility of your back. Just a nice, simple press. And after this round, we want you to run and grab a piece of paper. We forgot to tell you, but get a piece of paper so that you can log how many you do. So start counting for each round, count how many you do, and keep a log so next Saturday you can do more. That following Saturday, you can do a couple more. Intermediates, you may want to go from your knees. And just a regular push-ups, nice and slow and controlled. Now remember, it's two minutes. Okay, so you don't need to do 20 of them as fast as you can and then be out of breath the rest of the time. Nice and slow and controlled. Advanced, we're going to go from our toes with our, just a regular push-up. And again, I like to go to just a nice steady pace. I've got, what, a minute 15 left. And this is different than every other show that we've done in this series. This one, entire two minutes. So you'll work up to being able to do the whole two minutes. If you can't right off the bat, it's all right. Do as much as you can. Every week, we just ask you to challenge yourself because this is where everything counts. Muscle weighs more than fat. <laughs> it burns muscle, burns fat, so it's awesome. Do as much as you can. Yeah, and that, oh, we still have over 30 seconds left. If you need to, you know, you can come down to a break as an advance. Come down, take a breather for a couple seconds. Get ready to do some more. How you doing? I'm doing good. Man, I feel this. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't help that we did a workout before we're doing this show, but <laughs> <laughs> so already a little fatigued, but we'll make it through. Five, four, three, two, one. Time has expired. Time has expired. So now you're going to come up during the one minute break and do a horse stance. So feet about shoulder width apart. And just like you're sitting in a chair, hold it for as long as you can. Portion sizes are the key to maintaining a healthy weight. There has been a portion size explosion in the last 50 to 60 years. The average cup of coffee in the 50s was only about five ounces. Today, it's 16 to 20 ounces. That's three to four times as large as what our grandparents drank. It's no wonder that the average adult is 26 pounds heavier than they were in the 50s. The stand of pasta measurement used to be one and a half cups. Today, restaurants use three cups. Brownies in the 50s were cut into 24 squares. Today, they're sliced into only 9 or 12. We have good news. God has put the power in your own hands to quickly and easily manage your portion sizes. All right, so horse stance that round. Next round, we're going to do a jockey stance. But this round coming up, we're going to do squats. So grab your dumbbells, and you're going to want to bring them up to about shoulder height, and you're just going to squat down. Okay, so just simple squat down. And Lori's actually going to grab a prop to show you the proper position. Because as a beginner, you don't want to lean forward. So Lori's actually going to act like she's sitting down on this little wicker stool bench box thing. Yeah, this is just <laughs> so that your posture, your back is straight, and you're not bending over and doing this. You are just like you're going to sit down. You just barely touch your seat. And actually, you can use a chair or anything you want for this. but. This is a perfect way to align your body correctly. Yeah, it's actually you want to sink your hips backwards, and that's what that's a great form. So if you're at your house and you've got a sofa or a chair, act like you're sitting down on the sofa or a chair. Yeah. You can actually go up to the edge of it like Lori is and go down till you just barely touch and then pop back up. For advanced, we like to go down as low as you can. Okay? You might even want to get more weight and go down as low as you can. Man, you're going to feel this in your thighs. <laughs> yeah, these first four or five rounds, we work thighs. 
So they're really going to be screaming. But it's the largest muscle group in the body. Right. The thighs in the back pocket. So in order to get cardio, it's more efficient to use the larger muscle groups. That's why we're doing this. Muscle burns fat, burns weight. Burns more calories than fat. Yes. So add muscle. And that's why we're using a little bit of resistance to make it more difficult. <laughs> you don't have to have weight, no, but it you certainly don't. helps. Yeah. Makes it harder. It does make it harder. I mean, you could try this without Five, any weight your first four, week, and you'll three, notice it's a lot different two, once you add weight. All right, four, this round during the one minute break, you want to do a jockey stance. So your feet are close together, knees are close, and then you just have a seat. So Lori, what's today's scripture? Matthew 7, 16 through 20. You will know them by their fruits. Grapes are not gathered from thorn bushes, nor figs from thistles, are they? So every good tree bears good fruit, but the bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit, nor can a bad tree produce good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So then you will know them by their fruits. Yeah, an appropriate scripture for today's show. We're talking about eating healthier and fruits, but then that's also talking about the fruit of your life and the fruit of your walk with Christ. So that's a powerful scripture. We're going to share that again with you later, but you might want to memorize that scripture or write that one down, look that one up, and post it on your refrigerator. You want to bear good fruit. Don't be a bad fruit tree. This next round, ground up your dumbbells. We're going to do what's called a clean and press. So you're going to start with your dumbbells on the ground. You're going to bring them up to your shoulders and then press them overhead. So down from the ground, up to your shoulders, press them overhead. And I'm going to show you a modified version for the beginners. You're just going to keep your, you know, squat down, keep them by your knees, and then lift up and on your toes. So as a beginner, you don't have to go all the way down like Robert's doing. And then I'm going to show you an advanced version. It's a, more of an Olympic lift. When you do the clean, you bring it up to your shoulders, you want to squat down, then press overhead. So you'll bring it up to the shoulders, squat completely, then come overhead. So that's more of an advance. So you're really gonna work your thighs. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing over there? Good. Feeling it? Oh yeah. We encourage you to get a journal or just get a piece of paper, write down each round and write down how many you do. And each week, each Saturday, we want you to challenge yourself and do one more, two more, but challenge yourself. By the time you do this for a month or two, you're gonna be in phenomenal shape. <laughs> and burned a lot of weight. Burned a lot of calories. Whew. How are you doing? I'm good. You're huffing and puffing over there. Yeah, I'm uh, breathing hard, but <laughs> burning a lot of calories. We should have called this a stamina show <laughs> instead of cardio. It's going to build up your stamina. Five, four, three, two, one. Time. All right, one fire. minute break. Horse stance. That's where your feet are about shoulder width. You're going to ride a little bit bigger horse this round. For God's portion sizes, we're going to divide our hands into six segments, starting with your right thumb. That's your dairy digit. It's easy to remember because it looks a little like a cow udder. <laughs> your dairy digit represents the portion size for your dairy and cheese. This is how much cheese, kefir, yogurt, or other dairy products you should limit your portion size to. And we thank our little friend for bringing her dairy cow across to, to support the, this portion of the show. But if you think about that, it doesn't apply to milk. You can have more milk than that, but it really applies to especially cheese and some of those other dairy products. If you take a piece of cheese and fold it in three or four, it's going to equal about the size of your thumb. So if you're having milk and cereal or a glass of milk, it's a little bit more than that. But for the rest of your dairy, limit it to your dairy digit size. How are your thighs feeling? <laughs> they ought to feel good during this horse stance, right? Okay, this next round, you can put your dumbbells down. We're going to do jumps. So beginners, we encourage you to touch the ground. And then Lori's going to show you a beginner where you just come up on your toes and reach for the sky. So just touch, reach for the sky. So she's working a lot of calves. She did the last round, she's doing some more this round. 
Intermediates, we want you to touch the ground and then explode. So you're going to touch the ground and come up, get a little bit of distance from the ground, but touch the ground each time. So you're getting more thigh workout than just jumping. And as a beginner, if your knees start to bother you, don't go all the way down. Just come down to about knee height with your hands or touch your calves and then stretch up. Advanced, a little bit different version. We're gonna jump and reach for the sky, kind of like Lori's doing on beginner, but we touch the ground and then you're gonna reach. So touch and reach. <laughs> <laughs> so just another extra move in case the jump wasn't enough. <laughs> yeah, this is. So don't think this doesn't challenge us. It challenges us too. Can we do this? And I have no idea how many I've done. Neither have I. That's something <laughs> you have to concentrate on that. And I really encourage you before you do Saturday show, stretch some, warm up some, and stretch after the show as well because your body is going to feel this. I think my jump's getting lower and lower. <laughs> I don't even know if I'm clearing the ground. <laughs> so is my reach. <laughs> my thighs feel like they weigh 200 pounds each. And we're not done. <laughs> I'm gonna need to get on that horse just to carry me to the next round. <laughs> All right, this round is a jockey stance. So get on your horse, let him carry you to the next round. We covered your right thumb, now let's look at your left hand, starting with your palm. This is the portion size of your protein. So we could call it your protein palm. But since chicken and turkey are such great source for protein, we like to call this your poultry palm. Now over to your right hand palm. This is the portion size area for your grains. So we call it the pasta palm. Your palms are the perfect size to control your portion sizes for both grains and protein. You don't need an entire plate of spaghetti or a piece of chicken the size of your arm. Remember, your palms are for poultry and pasta. So we gave them catchy little names to help you try to remember that. Poultry palm and pasta palm. So you don't need any more than that. So don't have an entire plate of spaghetti the size of your hands. Limit your pasta to the size of your pasta palm. All right, one more round of thighs, I think. <laughs> we'll have to see. All right, round number five, we're going to do basically a deadlift. So you're just going to grab your dumbbells from the ground and just stand up. So just down from the ground and stand up. And as a beginner, you're going to go down to the knees and stand up. You're not going to go all the way down. Yeah, and Lori actually has another name for this that we've brought up in other shows. What do you call it, honey? A life lift. Jesus gave us life. We don't speak death. So Jesus gave us life. So we call these life lifts. <laughs> I like that. That encourages me. That inspires me. <laughs> Keep going. Well, this is the same principle that I did in the first exercise, or the second exercise, is pretend that you're sitting down. Don't bend over. Keep your back as straight as possible with just a little bit of a lean and sit. Yeah, that's great advice for the intermediate or advanced. When you go down, you don't bend, you squat. So you try to keep your back upright and actually try to touch your back pocket to your uh, heel. So you squat all the way down with your legs. I was so busy watching you, I forgot <laughs> to keep going. <laughs> and we, we talk in other shows about visualizing the muscle group you're working out. Of course, you can feel the muscle group in this one. But I encourage you to try to push the floor away with your legs. So you're not standing up. Envision pushing the floor away from you. So you touch the floor and then you push the floor away with your legs. That's going to really help you isolate the thighs. So that way when you're not just doing knee bends, you're actually using resistance in your body. Right. And it's like flexing your thighs. Yeah, it helps you visualize the force, where the force should be. The force isn't trying to lift yourself up by the head. The force is pushing the ground away from you. Chart your progress. Count how many you've done. And beginners, don't get discouraged. If you do one every 10 seconds, that's fine. Yeah, you'll get Four, there. Three, two, one. All right. Time has Let's get on a bigger horse this time. Shoulder width apart and get on maybe a big Clydesdale this time. Now for your fruit and veggies, starting with your left hand. When cupped, your fingers look like a small bunch of bananas. 
So that's an easy way to remember that they are your fruit fingers. If you have an apple, some grapes, or a cut banana in half, they should fit perfectly into the portion size space of your left hand fingers. Now to the other hand's fingers. These are your veggie fingers, perfect for your vegetables. One of the unique things about this portion size is that you can make them your universal coverall and default. You can substitute these for any of the others. So for your vegetables, if you're not going to have pasta or protein, you could have enough veggies to fill three or even your entire hand. You can have a whole vegetable lunch or a vegetable dinner. So that's your overall coverall, your veggie fingers. I like that fruit fingers. It does look like a bunch of little bananas. Yeah. All right, this next round is going to be a little bit more cardio. Not as much strain on the thighs, but we're going to do jumping jacks. Lori's going to show you a beginner version where she just steps out to the side and reaches overhead. So a beginner version, just step to the side and reach overhead. Intermediates, a lot of people get confused on jumping jacks, so I'm going to show you a simple technique. You want to form a triangle. So when your feet go out, your hands go up, so I'm forming a triangle. Then everything comes together. A lot of people going backwards and get mixed up. Just form a triangle and then come down. So intermediates in advance, we just go as long as we can. I'm trying not to clash with you. I can hop out of the way. <laughs> no, I was doing the same thing. I was, you were talking at the fireplace. <laughs> I'm up on the balls of my feet, so I could, I could jump out of the way okay. pretty easily. Of course, if you need me to, let's do it now. Not like the last 15 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I might not be able to move by then. Yeah, you may not feel like you're doing anything as a beginner, but you are. Just keep going. You're definitely moving. And that, that squeak in the floor might help us keep rhythm. <laughs> <laughs> you have to call the carpenter out here to see what's going on with the floor. Oh, and we designed this because some people really just don't like to jump. jump. They can feel their, the brain move. So we created something new right. so that they don't have to jump, but they'll get the same amount of exercise by moving. I moved off the squeaky part. <laughs> yeah, you did, didn't you? No? <laughs> oh, well, it's following me. Maybe it's me. My I don't think so. Just do what you can. Remember, count your reps. Write them down afterwards. How are you coming along? I'm good. My arms feel like they weigh 100 pounds. <laughs> good thing is at least we aren't doing squats of any kind. Five, four, three, two, one. Time has expired. All right, back onto your jockey stance. Let's talk about that scripture again. Matthew 7, 16 through 20. You will know them by their fruits. Grapes are not gathered from thorn bushes, nor figs from thistles, are they? So every good tree bears good fruit, but the bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit, nor can a bad tree produce good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So then you will know them by their fruits. So when people look at your life and what you're walking through, are they seeing the fruit of Christ, the fruit of righteousness? Are they seeing the good fruit that Jesus does through us? Yeah, I love that. The figs don't come from thorn bushes. No. Oh. <laughs> it's got to be a good fruit bearing tree. All right, this next round, you're going to get to actually lay down and we're going to do some sit-ups, a lot of variations. So go ahead and get down. For beginners, Lori is just going to reach for the sky. So just reach for the sky and do a little tiny crunch. So both hands reach for the sky and then you just do a little crunch. Nice and slow and controlled. Intermediates, I want you to reach up and then do a leg lift. Okay, so bring your hands all the way overhead. Reach and then do a leg lift for intermediates. So reach, then do a leg lift. For advanced, we want to touch our hands and our feet over top. So bring them up together. And this is where we call it a V sit up. You form a V. So go ahead and reach, touch them together. And beginners, keep your feet flat, bend your knees. This will put more emphasis on the key, on the core. So you can tell when I talk how my core <laughs> squishes, so it's hard to speak. Well, that's why I'm not saying much. I'm just gonna probably be quiet and let you guys enjoy the music and <laughs> help you keep count so that you don't lose count of how many you did this Saturday. You know, we encourage you to do the stretching show. Do that Tuesday and Friday stretching show after this program, before this program, <laughs> whenever you can. 
We're almost there. You can do it. Are you talking to me or the viewers? I think I'm talking to myself. <laughs> I am declaring over myself, I can do this. I can do all things through Christ who gives me Amen. strength. Amen. Okay, I'm not resting. I just dropped my microphone. Whoops. <laughs> not that they want to hear anything right now anyway, because they're, well, we're sure you're in as much agony at home as we are. This is tough. This is Saturday though. This is your Saturday cardio. You want to really push it. It's really hard after all those thigh exercises to do this leg lift. All right. Now get up as quickly as you can and get on your horse. You've covered your right hand, dairy digit, veggie fingers, and pasta palm. Also your left poultry palm and fruit fingers. Now up to your left thumb. We call it your fat finger. It represents how much oil and fat you should have. It truly is a fat finger, so it should be one of the easier of the six portion segments to remember. Yeah, a fat finger for your fats. This covers almonds, avocados, butter, cashews, canola oil, corn oil, mixed nuts, olive oil, peanuts, pecans, pistachios, pumpkin, olives, and walnuts. So if you think about it, if you want to have a snack of mixed nuts or especially walnuts, you only want it about the size of your thumb. So four or five walnuts would fit into the size of your fat finger. So that's all you need for your snack, four or five walnuts. When you think about the oils, that's a lot. You notice when I do some of these stances, I uh, act like I'm praying. I don't know if I'm supposed to be in jockey or horse, I mix them all up. So whatever you want to do in between rounds. Let's go ahead and have a seat again. This round we're going to do leg flutters. So beginners, put your hands underneath your back pocket and just lift one leg at a time. So beginners, as Lori does, just one leg at a time. Intermediates, you want to actually flutter. So as if you're on the side of a pool, kicking. And this one's important to watch the clock. Because what you'll do is you may want to do it for 10, 20 seconds, and then take a five second break. Then go for 10, and or then take a five count. second break. Or you can count. You could yeah. count one, two, three, four, five, six, and put them down and then do one. Now we've got a special treat for the advanced, or if you want to try this as a beginner <laughs> intermediate. You're going to flutter your hands while you flutter your feet. So your hands go up and down, and your feet flutter. And you're arching your back a little bit, a little bit of a crunch. And where'd this exercise come from, Rob? This is actually a Navy SEALs exercise. They'll do this in the surf. Of course, it's a lot easier here, just laying in the air condition. They'll do it on the surf with the water, salt water splashing into their lungs. So we've got it easy. Just think how easy you have it today. I just lost count. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll just do, let's say, 10 seconds and take a couple second break. So I'm going to go again at 50. Maybe I'll try to go to 40. And then I'll take a couple second break. So just do what you can. Just move. So if you want to do the beginner with Lori, just move one leg at a time. Just move. That's the key. And if your thighs feel like they weigh 100 pounds, you're right with us. <laughs> we, we know. <laughs> yeah, it feels like somebody's holding on to my ankles. I feel like I've got little children sitting on my legs. <laughs> oh, they might be. I need an angel to help me lift my legs up. All right, five seconds, honey, go. We five, can make it. Four, and then you're going to get on your horse three, again. Two, one time so just pop right up. <laughs> or yeah. get up slowly and get on that? your horse. Or is it jockey? I think we're on jockey this round. I don't know, whatever. Get on a horse or your jockey. Isn't it incredible to think that all of this time your hands carried the key? That God has given us the tools and the knowledge to eat healthier. We just need to follow his guidance. Spend a few minutes memorizing the six segments. Fruit and veggie fingers, pasta and poultry palms, fat finger and dairy digit. Now, if you can remember them, think how easy it will be to control your portion sizes. If you go to a restaurant, you can partition your food and take the rest home. Then we encourage you to slow down, chew your food, and actually enjoy the taste of your meals. So yeah, if you go to a restaurant and they serve you poultry that is a lot larger than your palm, cut the rest off, get a to-go box, put it in the to-go box, and basically you can have a second meal. You get a two-for-one meal. So you're, uh, you're kind of mid-horse jockey. Oh. Is that a quarter horse? <laughs> it doesn't matter as long as you're doing something. <laughs> oh, God. All right, last round. Congratulations, you made it. For beginners, <laughs> this is a mountain climber. Lori, as a beginner, is just going to march. She's going to march over her mountain. And she likes to swing her arms. So just bring your knees up. Intermediates, you could do the same. You might bring your knees higher, bring them chest height. 
you know, as high as you can, or intermediates, we've got a couple other versions for you, is to get down on the ground for a mountain climber, and you just switch feet. So I'm just gonna switch my right with my left, and then switch back. So that's an intermediate, just keep switching. Advanced, we like to hop switch. So I'm gonna hop and switch my feet. And I'm gonna go, I don't know, maybe do 10 or 15 or 20, and then I'll take a break, just a couple second break to breathe. And I like to switch it up a little bit. I like to get my knees really high. I use my arms because it helps me get my knees up. <laughs> There's that bone reason. <laughs> and you do get some cardio because you're working your arms. So it pumps your heart. And then I go back down to going a little bit faster. And yes, after about a minute and a half, your thighs are going to feel like they weigh 100 pounds or whatever. <laughs> Just keep going. And then you'll start sweating and perspiring like I am. Remember, this is your last round yeah. of Saturday. Tomorrow is Sunday. You get to take tomorrow off. Just relax, walk with friends, but really push it today. Just a little further. This is a pretty steep mountain I think I'm trying to get over. Yeah. How are you? I'm good. Doesn't your scripture say just to speak to your mountain? Yes. It'll be it cast does. into the sea? Yes. I think it'd be easier believe. just to speak to it instead of doing this. Say to your mountain, believe. How much? Oh, 10 seconds. I gotta go. Five, four, three, two, one. Time has Whew. expired. Lord, you have some special scripture to share on our closing? Yes, it's Ephesians 2, 8, and 10. When you've received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and ask him into your heart, he says, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift from God, not as a result of works so that no one may boast, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in, him, in them. So this is a salvation, the gift of Jesus Christ, salvation in our hearts. That's a gift from God. So that's something that we can't boast about. Jesus did all of it for us. Ask him into your heart. Yeah, you're saved by faith. Just have faith in him and then ask him for everything. In other shows, we've talked about so many different scriptures throughout these programs, but basically you just have to ask him into your heart and rely on him for everything. We always close with 3 John 1, 2. Beloved, I pray that in all respects you may prosper and be in good health just as your soul prospers. Thank you so much for joining us. God bless you. I don't know what the next round is, but I pray it's not thighs. Oh, it is. It's thighs. What were we on, horse or jockey? I don't remember. Uh... We were on horse, now we're on jockey. Jockey? I think so. I don't remember. I don't either. <laughs> <laughs>